while the urine formation process is going on in the kidneys, inside the nephrons, all the electrolytes and fluids are struggling hard to avoid being excreted in urine. As the urine formation process begins with filtration from the glomerular capillaries into the Bowman's capsule and proximal tubules, and then the tubular reabsorption starts. Now, each and every ion, solute, and fluid has has to go through the proximal tubule and they are trying their level best to avoid being excreted in the urine. If they are not reabsorbed, that ion or fluid will definitely go and excrete it in the urine. Now today in this lecture, we will see how water is reabsorbed from the proximal tubule into the blood. Now tubular reabsorption is the second step of urine formation and we have discussed different methods through which actively and passively different solutes, ions and fluids are reabsorbed from the proximal tubule of the kidney into the peritubular capillaries, into the blood. Now, as these substances are going, as the sodium is going, as the sodium is reabsorbed and the reabsorption of sodium is an active process, similarly the reabsorption of glucose, sodium and glucose, it is going on and the reabsorption of glucose also needs energy. Similarly, the water reabsorption from the proximal tubule into the blood needs some kind of energy but it is not a direct energy and this energy basically comes from the gradient, the uh, concentration gradient. Now whenever solutes are absorbed, now we have discussed so many times that these cells, these cells are representing the cells in the proximal tubule where the reabsorption is going on from the tubule into the blood. So when reabsorption starts and when sodium potassium pump is throwing the sodium out from the cells into the interstitium and that sodium is then going into the blood into the peritubular capillaries there is decrease in sodium so sodium from the tubule is going inside and while going inside through a carrier protein it is also taking its friends glucose and amino acids now they also share this ride with the sodium and they also go in the prime power the primary power is coming from this pump the sodium potassium pump which is creating sufficient space to allow the entry of sodium from the tubule into the cells because when this pump throws out sodium outside there is sufficient space and there is decrease in concentration and there is high concentration of sodium outside so this, that there is a chance for sodium to enter into the cell now whenever the concentration of sodium increases on one side and decreases on the other side water water will move from the area where concentration is low, where the concentration of solute, especially the sodium is low, to a region where the concentration of sodium is high. So when there is decrease in sodium, this sodium will move inside the cell. So the concentration of sodium will increase here. Now water will move from region where the concentration of sodium is low to a region where the concentration of sodium is high. And this process, as we have so many times discussed, is known as osmosis. So in the urine formation process, in the urine formation process, in the tubular reabsorption step, water is reabsorbed from the proximal tubule into the uh, peritubular capillaries through osmosis. And it is due to the movement of salute. When the salute concentration increases inside the cell and into the interstitium, the salute concentration in the tubule decreases and the concentration of water here increases. Now water from higher concentration region the concentration of water here increases, it remains high and the concentration of sodium remains low. Now here the concentration of sodium is high, this concentration of solute is high. So water will move from region where the concentration of water is high and the concentration of solute is low to a region where the concentration of water is low and the concentration of solute is high and this process is known as osmosis and this osmosis process is responsible for the reabsorption of water and this is a passive process this process does not need energy it is totally dependent on the concentration uh, on the concentration gradient of water but when water is moving when water is moving it basically moves through these tight junctions and the membranes now these tight junctions these tight junctions in the membrane in the proximal tubule they are not very much tight they are not very much tight and they will allow the water to move inside through the membrane and through the tight junctions when the water is moving it will also drag some solute it will also drag some solute like urea along with it into the cells and this is known as solvent drag this is known as solvent drag now some of the substances which are dragged through this process the solvent drag the solvent drag with the help of water and they get entry from the tubule into the cell and then to the intercellular space and the uh, interstitial space and the blood through this solvent drag system or with the help of water those solutes those ions are basically dependent for their reabsorption on the sodium on sodium now whenever the amount of sodium or the concentration of sodium in the tubule and the intercellular spaces is disturbed it is increased or decreased so the solute which are absorbed with this the solvent drag process their reabsorption is also disturbed now coming to the point osmosis is basically the movement of water and it is basically the reabsorption process in the proximal tubule now as we have discussed that in the nephron in the nephron 
there is a proximal tubule loop of Henle a distal tubule. So the membrane cells, the cells in this region, in the proximal tubule, their tight junctions are not very tight and their permeability for water is high and they allow the osmosis process to occur easily. But as the fluid move along from the proximal tubule into the loop of Henle or the loop of Henle and then the distal tubule, these tight junctions, the cells, the cells present in these areas are not uh, are very really, are more tight. The tight junctions are really tight, and they will not easily allow the the water to move from the tubule into the cell in the in the loop of Henle in the distal tubule. So the reabsorption of water, which is the second step of your information, so the reabsorption of water from these tubule into the blood from these tubule into the blood is easy in proximal tubule, but it becomes difficult in the loop of Henle in the distal tubule. Now, if there is secretion of a hormone from the brain, which is known as ADH or antidiuretic hormone. This hormone basically will increase. This will increase the absorption of water down the tubule at the level of distal tubule and the collecting duct as well. So if this hormone is secreted from the brain, it will increase the reabsorption even in the distal tubule and the collecting ducts level. So that antidiuretic hormone is like the VIP pass for water or the osmosis process. If this VIP pass is available with the water, it can be reabsorbed even in the distal tubule, even in the collecting ducts in the the water will be able to avoid being thrown out of the body in the urine but if this vip pass the antidiuretic hormone is not available then reabsorption in the distal tubules in the collecting ducts level will be very much difficult and water will not be absorbed easily because the tight junctions which are not very tight in the proximal tubule they are very tight in the distal and collecting ducts and that they, they will not allow osmosis process easily so that is the method how the Water is reabsorbed through the osmosis process in the proximal tubule, loop of Henle, distal tubule and collecting duct and how they basically the reabsorption of water helps in the solvent drag and reabsorption of certain ions and how the antidiuretic hormone, basically ADH, the antidiuretic hormone simply means a hormone which is against the diuresis, antidiuretic. Diuresis is basically the urine uh, urination process. So something against the diuresis is antidiuretic hormone. So this will, this hormone will increase the reabsorption of water from tubule into the blood so it will avoid the excretion of water in urine and it will helps its absorption in the uh, blood even at the level of loop of Henle distal tubule and even in the especially in the collecting ducts and distal tubules so that's all about the osmosis the passive water reabsorption by osmosis in the uh, nephrons thanks a lot for watching the video